Donald bet. Trump's New York criminal trial is not on today. Reportedly, they take Wednesdays off. We'll see if that continues. But there's one big place where there is big action, and that is the U.S. Supreme Court. It happened yesterday when the justices heard arguments over the government's charges against a former police officer who was indicted for his role in the January 6th riot. Now, here's why it's key. He's one of 330 people facing a specific obstruction charge for their role in the riot. Special counsel Jack Smith has charged Donald Trump with that very same count. Some justices appeared highly skeptical of the use of that law, which was actually enacted to prevent document destruction in the wake of an Enron disaster. Remember Enron all those years ago. Neil Gorsuch pressed hard. Would a sit-in that disrupts a trial or access to a federal courthouse qualify? Would a heckler in today's audience qualify or at the State of the Union address? Would pulling a fire alarm uh, uh, before a vote qualify for 20 years in federal prison? There are multiple elements of the statute that I think might not be satisfied by those hypotheticals. To the extent that your hypotheticals are pressing on the idea of a peaceful protest, even one that's quite disruptive, it's not clear to me that the government would be able to show that each of so those protesters had corrupt protests intent. So mostly peaceful protest that actually obstructs and impedes an, an official proceeding for an indefinite period would not be covered? Not or? necessarily. We would just have to have the evidence of intent. Legal expert Jonathan Turley says Gorsuch laid bare the problems for the government's argument. Arizona's former attorney general argued the government should not be trying out untested or novel theories in high-profile cases. Matt Whitaker, former acting U.S. attorney general. Well, that's disturbing. I, I mean, yeah. we're, we're going we're gonna to roll the dice on this and see if it sticks. Yeah, it's good to be with you, Harris. If you remember the procedural posture of this case, the district court judge kicked it out, said this doesn't apply. Mm -hmm. To your point, Enron, it was all about document shredding. Even President Joe Biden, then Senator Joe Biden, said this statute was about document shredding. Now, uh, as, you know, the district uh, circuit court, the appeals court, reinstated these charges. Now the Supreme Court's looking at it and saying this is not the way this statute applies. And Neil Gorsuch did just completely shred uh, the government's argument. And it's important not only for the 300-plus that have been uh, charged under this statute, but two of the four counts in the D.C. case that Jack Smith has brought against mm -hmm. Donald Trump are this exact statute. Yeah, but this, this idea of walking outside the bounds of what we normally see in legal proceedings is also happening here in New York. We've never seen a case like what's up against Donald Trump in New York either. Well, we've never seen that. But remember, there are so many other important crimes that should be on trial right now in New York. Uh, and they are not being prosecuted. They're not being pursued uh, because a lot of the resources of the New York uh, district attorney's office under Alvin Bragg are being focused on Donald Trump and trying to, you know, bring him down. And again, novel legal theories with extensions of the statute of limitation. And it just, it's going to eventually mm -hmm. all these things are going to fall apart on appeal. Yeah. We'll have to see if it happens before November 5th. That might be politically what Democrats are worried about right now, too. Uh, jury selection continued yesterday in Trump's hush money trial in New York. And there again, uh, Wednesday's off, so they're not in court today. Uh, the judge dismissed more than 50 people. He did finally see the official swearing in of seven jurors. Eleven additional ones are needed, as you know, to keep the count before opening arguments can begin. So you'll need jurors and some alternates. Uh, questions are swirling over whether truly impartial jurors can even be found in Democrat-run Manhattan and over the motivations of those who are hoping to sit on that jury. jury. Juror number two is a nurse who says she gets her news from New York Times, CNN, but claims she has no opinion about Trump. She also said she believes no one is, ab is above the law. Trump weighed in on potential jurors and, again, took on the judge and the entire trial.
Uh, if you're a juror in your mind is an ideal juror. In Anybody trial, that's fair. Do you believe the jury, the jury seated today? I'll let you know after after the trial, depending on that. Because don't forget, you know, we're appealing. There shouldn't be a judge. If you look and you take a look around, a good strong look, every legal scholar, every legal pundit said there should be no trial. This is not, there was nothing done wrong. This is all politics. So again, is that sort of novel nature of the charges and the movement against right. this president. But let's dig in on the jurors. What did you learn about juror number two? And, and what does it tell you? We don't know anything other than what I shared with the audience. She watches, you know, other networks, but yet has no opinion about Trump. Yeah, 50 of 92 of the first jurors were dismissed because they uh, articulated that they could not be fair and impartial. I worry about the ones that are trying to be stealth and not admit. But you can tell uh, not only their biases, but, you know, what's being poured into their head on a daily basis. If, you, if you're watching other networks, you know what those people on there are saying. There are not people that are giving you fair and impartial uh, takes on these legal theories and on these legal cases. You know, but all of these jurors ultimately are going to have to continue to be investigated. Because remember, these names were given mm. right before jury selection. So they have not had time to investigate. And so Facebook posts, Twitter, X, you know, wherever these folks are out there communicating, voting histories, all of that is going to be continued to be poured over. And so some of these could be exposed. And that's why you're seeing so many alternates being picked, because they're, I would imagine one or two of these folks getting kicked off because they are hiding their true biases. Real quickly, is it kind of, you know, par for the course for people to be asked where they get their news? Or is that directly to, to learn whether or not they have any uh, preconceived bias against the president or or for right. him. So I've picked juries both as a prosecutor and a defense attorney, and obviously each case is unique, each defendant's unique, and so the questions you're going to ask, in this case, certainly where people get their news and information is going to be relevant to whether somebody is fair and impartial. Matt Whitaker, always great to have you on the program. Thank you for your time and your expertise. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.